So let's first discuss what is iterative methods for solving steady state equations. Okay. So iterative methods has been developed pretty pretty early. They are developed because of a simple reason that when the matrices gets large enough, it is very hard to solve these matrix equations. And uh, uh, again, going back to the age when people don't even have computers, they started using iterative methods. So, so let's say somebody wants to solve a structural equation, and they want to figure out what are the deformations of various elements under a certain load? How they do it is how, how they started doing it um, when the matrix is very large, when the system is too large to be solved using Gauss elimination. Remember, at that time, there is no computer, so if you want to do Gauss elimination, there is a, a, a huge amount of numbers just to be calculated by hand. So what they started doing is to relax, is to move one element at a time and figure out if you go through all the elements just to make each individual element into equilibrium. If you go around a few times, although the entire system may not achieve equilibrium yet, but it may be a good enough approximation if you iteratively make individual elements into equilibrium. So that is one way of thinking about iterative methods. Okay, so I'm going to introduce iterative methods using the Poisson's equation. So if you have a Poisson's equation, du squared dx squared equal to f, and if you are not allowed to use any matrix solvers, let's say, let's assume, okay? Or let's see, let's say, how do you solve this equation? One way to solve this equation, if you are not allowed to use backslash or any matrix solvers, is to solve an unsteady equation instead. Right? So I can change this equation, I can change my problem to that I want to solve the heat equation, du dt equal to partial square u partial x square, and what should I add on top of that? If I solve this equation, what I get at the end is, so, so let's say boundary condition, again, very simple, u0 equal to u1 equal to 0. And uh, uh, again, u0 equal to u1 equal to 0. So if I solve this equation, I will get 0 at the end, right? So how should I modify this equation so that I get a solution to the equation I want to solve at the end? Minus f, right? So if I solve this equation and assume my solution procedure is stable, then at the end, when I converge to a steady state solution, the du dt term becomes smaller and smaller as I iterate because, because of stability, right? What I get at the end is a solution to the equation I want to solve, right? And remember, by, by solving this unsteady equation, we don't actually have to solve any matrix equations. Even if, let's say, we discretize this equation, no matter using finite, uh, so, so okay, so let's don't talk about finite element yet. So let's talk about finite difference. If we talk about finite difference, what we get is du dt, where u is a vector, being equal to matrix A times u minus this f where a is a finite difference approximation to the second order derivative, right? So in order to solve this equation, for example, using forward order or runger kata method, I don't need to solve a matrix equation for a. What do I need? How do I use this matrix if I solve this equation with forward order? Multiplication, right. I only, iterative method in general, only requires explicit operation with the matrix, for example, multiplication. Okay, multiplication is a, is a very, is basically uh, sometimes the only requirement you have on the matrix in order to apply iterative methods. 
So for example, if I want forward order, I'm going to be saying u of k plus 1 minus uk divided by delta t is equal to a times uk minus f. Right, so k here is the time step. And it makes sense for me to choose delta t to be as large as this method is stable so that I converge to a steady state as fast as possible. So, so you can, I'm going to be talking about Jacobi iteration method next. And you're going to see a very close analogy to the forward order method of solving an unsteady equation. To the iterative method of solving the steady state equation. And in general, you can think of an iterative method as a generalization of solving an unsteady version of the equation so that you obtain a steady state equation, a steady state solution when k here goes to infinity. k can be considered as a, a pseudo time in this case or a iteration number uh, rigorously. Okay. So the first type of iterative method we are going to be talking about is the Jacobi iteration method. So the Jacobi iteration method starts with, so all the iteration methods starts with a, a matrix. So we want to look at the solution AU equal to B. Okay, so, so iterative methods for solving linear equations starts with the linear equation. They don't usually start with the, the PDE. Um, but sometimes you have to use the properties of the PD. Okay, so, but Jacobi iteration requires just the matrix. So you have AU equal to B. That can be, that equation can be split into many parts. When the matrix A can be split into a diagonal part of A plus the lower diagonal part of A plus upper diagonal part of A. And Jacobi iteration works very well if the Jacobi, uh, if, if the uh, diagonal part of A is dominant, at least not zero. The, the diagonal part of A cannot be zero, and uh, it works the, the larger the diagonal part of A is compared to the off-diagonal parts, the better usually Jacobi iteration is gonna work. Because how it works, is when you have a splitting that way, you can write the equation as d times u plus l times u plus u times u. So this u and this u is different. This u is uh, the upper diagonal part, and this u is the solution equal to b. And what we do is we move all the off diagonal components to the right hand side and thereby getting du is equal to b minus lu minus uu. So up to now, this is just an algebraic manipulation. But then something is going to be different. I'm going to put a superscript k plus 1 on here and a superscript k over here. So this is saying that, okay, first of all, let's look at what if I started with the correct solution? What if I, I have an initial guess? So u0 is called the initial guess. In general, it is just a guess. It doesn't have to be accurate at all. But if you started with the correct solution, if u0 is equal to u, what is u1 going to be? 